Hello and welcome to the PlayStation 4 launch event coming to you live from London's Covent Garden. I'm Dan Ma. I'm Holly Bennett. I'm Guy Cocker. And I'm Lucy James. And these are our friends. Hooray! Over the next two hours, we're going to be bringing you all of the action from this launch event right until the time that the clock strikes midnight. And everybody here, and of course all of you at home, can pick up your PlayStation 4 and play into the early hours. Before we carry on though, let's have a little reminder of what this is all about. That's all right. <laughs> Peggy, 18. Peggy, 18. Well, you join me and Holly inside the PS4 lounge. It's actually been open for a few weeks now, and basically anyone that stumbled upon this location has been able to get hands-on time with the PS4 and a multitude of games weeks before launch. Very, very exciting. It but it isn't just all about the UK. The PlayStation 4 is launching in a number of countries tonight, and we're going to be taking a look at some of the launches all around the world. The original PlayStation offered a true 3D arcade gaming experience in the home for the very first time. For the last decade, we have strived to push for constant innovation, unprecedented levels of success and inspiration. What's in store for the future of the PlayStation business? Ladies and gentlemen, everything you are about to see is real time.
Right, now I'm here with Michael, who was a lucky enough competition winner, and he's one of our super special guests. You pre-ordered your PS4, and you're here now, enjoying the atmosphere before the launch. I am. I now, am. tell us, uh, tell us why PS4? Like, why are you excited for PS4? Why PS4? Well, I remember when I got my PS1 in '95, and I've got a PS2, and I've got a PS3, and it just had to be PlayStation 4. <laughs> now tell me, what is, what is your, your favourite gaming moment? Like, What is that one bit that you could replay a million times and always get those feelings? It has to be, can I say spoiler alert? It has to be the end of The Last of Us, and if you haven't played it, it's awesome. That moment with Joel, yeah, it's just that, that moment. It is, that, that, if you haven't played The Last of Us, do it now. You've got the best part of a few hours left to yeah, try and get yeah. through that before the PS4 is here. What are you looking forward to on the PS4, be it launch or into the future? What is the one game you're looking for? Well, the one game, I think Killzone Shadowfall, definitely for me. But um, I think what I really, what really intrigues me as far as the new features, like the share, the, the new touchpad on the, on the, uh, on the controller, uh, which, those, those, those features get me excited. So are you looking forward to kind of stream your stuff and people join you and like watch you play? Yeah, I mean, the others play and being able to join them and just it, it's it's yeah it's awesome now what about some of the newest things comes to ps4 looking at like indie stuff is your thing is that something you try out now with ps4 have you been with that indie scene a long time yeah i mean i, I kind of pride myself in trying things on the fringe so i have tried resogun and um uh, a con uh contrast nice. yep contrast and the mother load actually i really for mother load, yeah. How do you do on Resogun? Because I was told if you get above a million, that's apparently uh, 10 million, sorry, that's that's not too bad. So how did you yeah. do? Well, I didn't get that far because it was a really short, you know, <laughs> demo, but I'm really looking forward to the games as well, yeah. Getting on those high scoreboards and showing your friends who's boss, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Now, uh, it's been it's been a long time coming. It's been, what, seven years here in the UK since we've seen. Yeah. So you talked about your favorite game moment in The Last of Us, but take us back through some of your favorite PlayStation 3 kind of games. What have you picked up and thought, hmm, that is it? Oh, PlayStation 3 games. Uh, I mean, they've been, they've been, they've been so many. It's hard, it's hard to pick one. I mean, I can go even back to PlayStation 2 games. I mean, I remember the Metal Gear series. I mean, I, I love the Metal Gear series. I'm looking forward to that coming to the PlayStation 4 as well. Um, Final Fantasy series, I'm a big fan. Yeah. We've been waiting for Final Fantasy 15 since like forever, and I can't wait for that to land on the PlayStation 4. Got to ask, yeah. Kingdom Hearts, yay, Kingdom nay? Kingdom Hearts, yay, definitely a yay, definitely a, a yay. And I hear Nino Kuni maybe might be coming to the PS4, maybe. I'm waiting for that. Sony make it so, <laughs> definitely. That that I would like to see. All right, uh, Dan, it is over to you. Guy's actually got the cushiest job of the lot because he's actually hanging out in the playroom with a bunch of industry bigwigs. I think right now he's there with Fergal Gara, who's the managing director of Sony Computer Entertainment UK, to see what he thinks of the PlayStation 4. I've got a feeling he's going to like it. Guy, over to you. Peggy, 18. You're too late. I've already summoned media. <laughs> okay, let's go.
Covent Gardens at PlayStation Space. I'm joined by Fergal Gara, who is the UK. Thanks for having us. Thanks for being here, Guy. So obviously, this is the culmination of a long time, of a lot of work for you guys. How's it here in Covent Garden? It feels absolutely phenomenal. You know, we've been right immersed in this since February, really, February 20th, and that sort of seems like a long time ago, but it has gone like a flash. Obviously, behind the scenes, I was reading the PlayStation, I think it was a PlayStation US blog. The work has actually been going on PlayStation 4 since 2008. It's been like five years in the making. So for you guys working behind the scenes, it must have just been an incredible amount of work to get to this day. Well, absolutely. It's been a five-year project, as you rightly said, really trying to understand what the developers want from a next-gen machine, what the gamers expect to see. So lots of secret squirrel work going on way behind the scenes until we were finally able to reveal it publicly in February. And then, of course, that's where me and my team really, really kicked into action and started preparing for tonight. So what's, uh, just to explain to the people who might be watching at home, what's it, what's it like for you guys, the excitement of actually being able to deliver a console like this into players' hands? It must be pretty incredible. Well, that's what we do, you know, that's why we come to work, that's what excites us. Uh, everybody comes to work because they love gaming and they love, you know, entertaining people, really, and delighting gamers. So th this is our baby, this is our moment, this is a very proud time for us all. And you can see outside, I mean, there's queues of hundreds of people just really eager to get their hands on it. They're, they're outside here just playing the games now, but they're finally going to get to take them home and, and play them in their homes. Absolutely, this is the this is the real moment, you know. And they, some of them will have had a little bit of time to try it, maybe at uh, you know certain Eurogamer Expo would be a good example, or you can try it in, try it in store to a degree now as well. But a great time to get immersed in it, and of course take on their very own console tonight. So, so Fergal, you you've presumably been playing this for quite some time. What would you recommend that people do when they get the PlayStation 4 home? What would be the first thing that you would do? Well, power it up, obviously. Uh, log in on the PlayStation Network. Uh, and of course, try some games. So there is a bit of an installer day one install to go and get fully up to speed and have uh, all of the full all of the features live. But then you know, get into a game. You know, one of the most impressive things about PlayStation 4 is how quickly you can get into the game. We said it would be simple. We said it would be immediate, and actually that is proving to be very true, very slick. So get gaming, really. And you know, I would thoroughly recommend Killzone Shadowfall as one of our you know top uh, first-party studio games, and it really does stretch PlayStation 4. So the, the graphical beauty, the the lighting effects, for example, the sense of scale, vertical scale in particular, you know, is, is really beautiful. So get stuck in, get playing. And obviously that Killzone in particular is a, a first party title. The guys at Gorilla are well known for really pushing the power of the PlayStation systems in the past, but they've gone to a whole other level with, with Killzone, I would say, this time around. Yeah, and, and their job as a first party studio is to demonstrate what the machine can do, you know, so they can, they've got greater freedom really to stretch it and make the game only for next gen, because it's the only first person shooter that is a next gen only title. So I think they've done an absolutely tremendous job. We're really proud of the job they've done. What else uh, really excites you about, about the system, Fergal? Again, having seen it, been hands on with it uh, a bit longer than people out there, is there any particular feature, whether it's, you know, the ability to stream to Vita that really excites you? Yeah, I think remote play is a great example to bring up, actually. So we'd, we've been talking about it, we've been reading about it, we've heard it was on the way. It's only when you try it, though, that you really get it. And it is truly seamless, really effective.
That now to be outside the home as well. So it's the full PlayStation 4 games on your PlayStation Vita. So amazing. And then of course the social experiences increase as well. Bigger friends list. Pretty much the whole, the whole social side of it has grown massively. Oh, totally. Uh, and Playroom, the product itself, which is installed on the PS4, you know, that's become a, a chat show tool for some people. So uh, it, it allows you to broadcast gameplay, or of course, you could do tonight's uh, event on a, uh, via Playroom if we wanted. One of the things when uh, when the PlayStation 4 was unveiled in February, uh, the, the lead architect, Mark Cerny, one of the things he said, you know, he wanted to make this system easy to develop for. But what does that actually mean for people that are making games for PlayStation 4 right now? Yeah. Well, it means they're, uh, they're unleashed in terms of the power that's there. They're going to find less restrictions in terms of delivers it. But most importantly, the tool. Faster. And you were saying uh, just outside before, since FIFA is a popular choice in the, uh, in the PlayStation UK office, how are your skills on FIFA? Uh, I'm not going to claim to be the best by any means, but it's a great, great, great game. Guys, two, three, four of them at lunchtime. So great for that. Fergal, I'm going to test your skills later. Now. Peggy, 18. James and I'll be bringing you all the action from outside the PlayStation lounge. I'm here with some very excited PlayStation fans who have been waiting for ages to be able to say that they were one of the first in the country to get their hands on the brand new PlayStation 4. I'm here with Shabazz and Ali. Guys, how long have you been waiting here? Oh, we've been waiting ages. I can't even feel my toes anymore, but we're so pumped that we're actually going to pick it up in around about two hours. I uh, just can't wait. Really, really excited. We were desperate to pick it up on launch day and be one of the first people in the country to play it. So really, really pumped. Well, it's been worth it, you know. We've been waiting, but we've got it now, so we're happy, very happy. So you've been here for a while. I mean, as soon as you heard about the PlayStation 4, was it ordering? Uh, no, I was actually going to wait, you know, for the um, official launch event to, um because they had um, quite a fantastic atmosphere here. Um, you've got approximately four, five hundred people here, and they're all gamers. So, like, you know, we we got to know a lot more people, made a few more friends, and uh, so like it was a really, really good time. Um, like, um, it was very, very cold, but we had a lot of fun as well. 
What games are you guys getting with your PlayStation 4s? Battlefield 4 and FIFA 14. Uh, we love um, Battlefield 4. Uh, uh, we played it for hours on end on the PlayStation 3. We've owned um, every single Sony console that's been released so far, and uh, that's a game, PlayStation, that's actually synonymous with gaming, and uh, we weren't going to miss this for the world. So a lot of multiplayer action in it for you as well? Oh yes, yes, same, Battlefield 4. We have been, as, as he said, you know, we've been playing Battlefield 3 a lot on PS3, so this time we will go for Battlefield 3 4. So do you guys have Vitas? Are you guys going to be trying out remote play at all? We've got Vitas. Um, we are pumped about that as well. Uh, let's see how the multiplayer action in Battlefield 4 works on the um, Vita. But uh, we just can't wait to get home, plug it into the TV and just have an all-nighter. <laughs> got the snacks ready. We've got the snacks ready. We're actually um, quite full because um, so many people have actually you know, taken quite good care of us. So yeah, we've got Red Bull, we've got snacks ready. We're all geared up and we're all you know, ready for it. So you guys have PlayStation 3s. Have you been Sony fans for a very long time? Yeah. I yeah, we've owned every single Sony console that's actually been released. Um, we're actually Sony people, and uh, we're like, we are very, very dedicated fans. And uh, we are drastically addicted to the um, trophy system as well. So uh, that's one of the best achievement systems out there. Well, yeah, it's always been Sony PlayStation. You know, we never got the Xbox. We don't want the Xbox. So we're happy with this, and we'll stick with this. Hopefully this is worth it. It's going to be a fantastic console. <laughs> Go Sony! <laughs> Go Sony! <laughs> What ex oh, sorry, we have another fan who's ready to come up and talk about the PlayStation 4. Guys, thank you so much. Have a lot of fun with it. Pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. Oh. Hello there. Hi, guys. What's your names? My name's Bilal. My name's Ahmed. And how long have you guys been waiting for the PlayStation 4? I've been waiting for about all my life, really. I've always wanted an upgrade. But I've been here since 4 in the morning, and I'm, there's only an hour and a half left, and I can't wait. Yeah, can't wait. You guys, FIFA 14. Yeah. you guys are so dedicated. So yeah. what new features in the PlayStation 4 are you guys looking forward to I'm most? I'm really excited with the share button because I like to get onto the YouTube. You like the screen and, on the pad? And get the big hits. Yeah. I always do. What games are you guys picking up tonight? Um, Call of Duty Ghost, um, FIFA 14. I'm Battlefield. Um, <laughs> he's a Battlefield fan. Uh, hey. <laughs> so you guys going to be playing together though, right? Yes, yes. Definitely. PS4 all the way. Definitely. Do you guys have Vitas? I don't have Vita, but I'm thinking of, because you can link the play, I'll probably go for a Vita as well. So yeah. You don't look convinced? Uh, no. He's, never, he's not heard of Vita. Yeah, I'm not into Vita. Yeah. I'm thinking of smashing my PS3 for the PS4. <laughs> so, Sony have a, a great launch lineup coming next year as well. Are there any games that kind of caught your fancy? Um, I'm really looking forward for the Drive Club, um, but hopefully I have to wait a little bit longer. But I've waited long enough, and another few months. Well, uh, is it coming out of January, I believe? Early next year? Yes. Uh, I've been upset with the GTA 5. It's rubbish. <laughs> I, I don't like it. <laughs> what GTA 5 rubbish? It's GTA 5. It's only yeah. on PS3. It hasn't even come out on uh, the next yeah. one. We want it on PS4. Yeah. So tell Rockstar, we want it on PS4 today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. Enjoy the launch. Are we, are we going inside now? Thank you. Up that way. Welcome. Hi, guys. Come on up. Hi. What are your names? Um, I, I'm Adrian. Matthew. And how long have you guys been queued up here in the cold, ready to get your hands on the PlayStation 4? Uh, I've been here at like 12.30. So not too 10 a.m. <laughs> Early riser. So what guys, what, guys, what uh, games are you getting tonight? Uh, I want Killzone really badly. And Battlefield. But I'm expecting that in the post soon. Battlefield 4, yeah! <laughs> so are you guys going to be playing together? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, You're like yeah definitely. Actually. I'm going to be online till probably Tuesday when I have work, but I have a good few days off, so PS4 pretty much the whole time. <laughs> so have you guys tried the new DualShock controller? What do you think of the 4 versus the 3? Uh, I got some experience at the Eurogamer Expo, but I like the, the new uh, concave controls now, so it's like a lot better. Are you guys going to be using the share features at all? Oh yeah. <laughs> Definitely on battlefield when I shoot some uh, choppers down. So if anyone's watching, just watch out. <laughs> okay, are you guys, uh, so you're gonna play together. Are you gonna pull an all-nighter tonight? I mean, you've, you've been in it for the long run. You've been well, here for a while. We've done it before, so yeah, we can do it again. Lifelong Sony fans? Uh, yeah, you can say that. Definitely a Sony fan now, yeah. <laughs> I was a Sony fan in the PlayStation days, and then when Xbox 360 come out, I was just like, I want a gener like this generation console, but PlayStation 3 is not out yet. <laughs> so in that case, I've got the Xbox 360. But now, definitely PlayStation 4, definitely, yeah, yeah. Is this the first launch event you guys have done? 
Uh, pretty much yeah, for a console, but we, I've done a few midnight launches for games like Battlefield and Forza 4. You guys going to be picking up Drive Club in the new year? Uh, soon, very soon, but right now it's Battlefield. Yeah, Battlefield all the way. Until Drive Club comes out, I'm just, I'm just going to keep practicing that. <laughs> Until I get good, I'm probably going to be quite rubbish. <laughs> no, but I'll teach you. <laughs> Okay, guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy the launch and enjoy the PlayStation 4. Will do. Been waiting so long for it. Hello, and we have some more excited PlayStation fans. Hi, guys. And what are your names? My name is Archwell. Archie. Precious. Precious, yeah. So, guys, you've been long, how, how long have you been out here? Uh, I, ju I just came. He's been out here for time now. Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been out here for like an hour now, yeah. And have you you've reserved your PlayStation 4? You're going to get it at midnight? Yeah, they said with the wristbands we can get it like at midnight, yeah. I don't even have one of those. How are you going to get one of you anyway? work for Sony, in it? Yeah, we're just waiting in line. I hope we get the bundles, though. Like, maybe with FIFA and Call of Duty or something like that. That's what we're waiting for. Out of all the launch titles, which are the ones you guys got your eyes on? FIFA, definitely, yeah. Big FIFA fan? Yeah, I am. <laughs> it's all about FIFA. That's the first game we have to get. Then after that, Call of Duty or something like that. So, you know, we're just excited, buzzing for the game. Have you tried the PlayStation 4 before? Or, have you, or did you just kind of see it get announced and you're like, I'm going straight for that? I've, I've tried it. I've played it a game. So, but I didn't really like it because the controller, they added up some stuff on it. So I, I didn't really like it. But yeah, I know it's going to be good. Sony never let, let us down, so, you know. <laughs> Yeah, but I haven't tried it though. But I've seen it, I've seen the previews and that. It's really good. I think it's going to be quite awesome like, to play, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be good. Awesome. So, you guys, do you have Vitas at all? Um, I, I, I wanted to get a Vita, but you know, the, there's, there's the other one that came out that flips. People were saying it wasn't good, so I was like, I, 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 I let all my hopes down for the PSPs and that. So, yeah, I'm into consoles now. So. What about you? No, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like Vitas. It's too, like, I like, I like playing consoles, like it's better on, on console, yeah. So you guys are going to be playing a lot of FIFA. Are you guys going to do an all-nighter? Definitely. I'm not going to school tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> guys, thank you so much. Enjoy the launch. Dan is inside talking to Blaine Smith, who's one of the first people in the country to pre-order a PlayStation 4 from game. And he's going to pick one up very soon. Peggy 18. You were expecting this, were you? No, I got promised free food and beer and just turned up. I had no idea. No so idea. when did you actually find out that you, were the, that you were number one? About five minutes ago. Five minutes ago? I got invited down on Tuesday and when, when you told me five minutes ago, that was it. That's insane. And so, and so what, what are they treated you to for, for, for being the first guy? Um, I've been put in a really nice hotel. Uh, it's just, it's well posh, well posh. I got a treat to a meal and then I got jump the queue and come inside free beer and a cupcake games there's not much more you can ask what more could you want it's, it's perfect it's a really good day it's been fantastic so when the clock strikes 12 it's going to be you getting the playstation 4 first being you're going to be handed it by some very special guests who we've not announced yet um and then what you're going to do is it straight back to the hotel rigging it up hoping that the hotel tv has hdmi i've, I've already checked the hdmi it's there it's definitely there so i've checked that i probably won't leave straight away but it's going to be pretty quick. 
I'm not going to hang around. So that unannounced guest, I can't just mention him and put. Not you right in, now. You know? No, I'll, I'll let you off for that. Then I'll leave it. I'll leave it. But yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to going back to the hotel in Pompton on FIFA. On, definitely. Okay. So yeah, that, that's your first game, FIFA. Yeah, FIFA, closely followed by Need for Speed. And then when I get rid of my mate, I'm probably going to hit Assassin's Creed up a little bit. <laughs> so you've got a mate to get rid of. You've got to get the multiplayer stuff out of the way first, and you can settle down with a proper single player. Yeah, once they're all gone, I can have some real fun. But until then, i got a part with them moaning, you know? What a pain. And how long do you reckon? Do you think this is going to be an all-nighter kind of a session? Yeah, we're probably going to walk out of the hotel without any sleep, to be honest. But you don't get this every day, do you? you know? New generation launch, VIP and all that. you got to enjoy it, and you've got to have fun. Yeah, I mean, this is the first PlayStation console for seven years now. So it's the first in seven years, and you're going to be the first guy in the UK to get the thing. How does that make you feel? A bit cruel, to be honest. There's been people out there since last night in the cold, queuing, and I just walked in front of all of them. I feel a bit horrible. Well, that's what you get for showing a bit of initiative, surely. Well, I just pre-ordered it because I thought everyone else would, but apparently <laughs> they didn't, so I don't know. Fair enough. So, I mean, you've obviously been a, you've been a PlayStation gamer since, since day one. Yeah, long time, long time. So when did you get your uh, first PlayStation? What do you remember playing on that? Honest to God. To Shinden, Ridge Racer, Tekken. Ridge Racer, I remember Tekken. I was, I like Tekken quite a lot. Um, honestly, I've drawn a blank. Digimon. Digimon yeah, on the PlayStation Digimon 1, yeah. Monsters. Yeah, a bit old school, <laughs> but yeah, I played that when I was a little. And I don't remember much more about the, the PS1, to be honest. That's oh, man, well, and then obviously moved on to PS2. Wait, have you been like a launch? Have you been a launch day kind of guy since then? Or? No, to be honest, this is the first time I've been there launch day. Most of the time, I sort of waited a little while. You know, you get the technical issues, the price drops, you don't have to queue outside for two hours in the cold. But then you know, I get people to come here, and then I'm here. So, but that was it. What was it about the uh, PlayStation 4 then that made you kind of book the trend? Originally, it was all the launch titles that aren't there anymore. You know, Drive Club, Destiny, all that kind of stuff. But it's coming, so, you know, the PS3 has not put me wrong. Got a lot of faith in Sony. I'm willing to wait the time for the, when the good games come out. And there it's, is some good launch titles. As well. There are some great launch titles. I've had one for a few days. I've played uh, Rezo Gun. If you want to get that from the PSN store, it's it's fantastic. So I've heard mixed things about that. Same with Knack. I'm not sure about Knack, but I'm definitely going to give them a try myself. Oh, I think they're definitely worth a crack, man. Okay, so uh, I'm going to hand over to Holly, who's going to uh, take us over to uh, a guy. Okay. He's going to be speaking to Ian Chambers, who's the Chief Digital Officer at Game. We're joined now in the playroom here at the Central London uh, PlayStation 4 launch. I'm joined by Ian Chambers, who is Head of Digital. So, Ian, tell me about what Game's doing. Obviously, you've got piles and piles of PlayStation 4s in the back here. Are going to finally make their way into people's homes tonight. Just tell us about how that feels. That's brilliant. We just can't wait to get PlayStation 4 into the hands of uh, of the game customers. They've been waiting for 10 months since pre-orders started. It's just the uh, yeah the excitement's a fever pitch, right? We've been doing this, getting people in. They're paying for their consoles already, so we're getting them all processed. And then at midnight, midnight 01, hundreds of consoles are going to be sold, and uh, just can't get them. You know, wait for them to get start playing. I, I see this outside. I mean, there's those guys here. I think since Monday, uh, a few days out there, it's still, I mean, in the age of the internet, like it's still a big thing coming down to a launch and queuing and doing, getting that experience. It is, it's all about the experience. It's all about being part of a, of something, a community, the passion, you yeah, know, we're gamers and we just love to be part of this. And, you know, we've done these uh, midnight launches for lots of our, lots of, uh, lots of the games across all of our 300 stores. And some of them we've effectively filled Wembley Stadium. We've had, you know, you know nearly 100,000 people come to them. So they're really massive events. It's not just about buying the console. It's about being part of something unique, the start of the next generation of gaming, um, we're all part of it. So game fans, uh, with game at least, traditionally still coming out for those midnight launches, not just for the consoles, but the games as well. It's about the games. I mean, first and foremost, it's about amazing games. We've got, you know, Knack coming, we've got Killzone. Personally, I'm waiting for Watch Dogs. I'm really excited about that. And Watch Dogs seems to really capture the imagination of a lot of people. Yeah, it does. And I think coming from Ubisoft, Montreal, they're just a fantastic studio, you know, with Splinter Cell and Assassin's Creed. I mean. I was really excited about Watch Dogs coming next year. So, uh, so across, I mean, this has been open, this space has been open for uh, for a couple of weeks now, but people can still go and, if you're not in central London, you can still go and play at game, play PlayStation 4 at game stores, basically, right around the country. That's right. We've been So we've been kissing out game stores with PS4s, with Vitas, with PlayStation 3s. You can go in them, 
play on them, experience what it's like. Um, and Game is already doing that, and it's going to be rolled out across all of our stores, you know, 300 stores in the next in the next couple of weeks. And so it's just really exciting. You know, the, the next generation's here. You know, we're here now. We've been waiting for it, and I think uh, now you can experience it. Come and play, and then if you like what you see, you know, buy a console. So on a on a personal level, here, I know you've been in the games industry for a while. You've been through a few PlayStation launches. How does this compare to previous uh, PlayStation launches? Yeah, it's massive. I mean, you, you've seen what's happening. You see the excitement. We, yeah, we had over four times the pre-orders on this version versus the last one. So it's a massive. Um, personally, uh, before I was uh, working in, in in the games industry, I was a gamer, and I still am. And I, I remember the PlayStation 2 launch when it was heaving it down with rain, and I was on Oxford Street, and my last 250 pounds I had, I spent it on a PlayStation 2, got home and started playing, and it was just the amazing experience. I can remember it like it was yesterday. So I've just. Uh, yeah, I'm now looking forward to the next generation. Yeah, PS4 is here and can't wait to get my hands on it as well. So you're, so you're going to be like the fans tonight, going home, midnight, going to play this thing? I haven't actually got one yet. So uh, as much as you might think you're working in a retailer, you might uh, you might get one straight away. We don't. We wait as well. And so I've pre-ordered mine um, and it's uh, I'm getting it tomorrow morning. So I'm looking forward to receiving it. And what on a personal level are you looking forward to? What's kind of from the PlayStation 4 launch lineup has really captured your imagination? Well, I love driving games. So I've been looking at Drive Club, um, I'm looking at Need for Speed. I also I love FIFA. I love I love. So there's a whole host of games, and you know Knack. I'm really looking forward to playing Knack as well for something a bit different. So um, so yeah, just just really excited. But I, I still can't wait for the even bigger games for me to come next year, and the ones that I'm really looking forward to. Watch Dogs is, is the one. Uh, so so I mean a lot of people that are watching are probably thinking, you know, how do, is it still is it too late for me to get my hands on PlayStation 4? Have you still got stock if people want to go to a store at midnight tonight and go and buy one? So there's very limited stock available, um, which uh, we've got some additional stock coming to the market and uh, Sony, we work closely with Sony to, to give some of those customers who didn't have a chance to pre-order for the launch day uh, a chance to get their hands on one tonight, but it's very limited. Okay, so like, what's, the, what's the best advice? If people are watching and are like, damn it, I left it too late to get a PlayStation 4, can they still go online? What's the best advice you can give them at this point? Yeah, so get down to a game store before midnight there may be some there may be some stock there available and you can find out where your nearest uh, game store is online on the store finder or go onto game.co.uk and there's a limited amount of stock there available on a first come first serve basis and we we really hope we can get as many of those apps customers who are anticipating the launch and so they can be part of the launch because they weren't pre-ordering in time for uh, the first day. Tell us how, how it's going to work on PlayStation 4 on the digital side that's the side you work on at game how is game kind of expanding its digital offering in stores? So digital's massively transforming the industry, as we know, and it's also transforming game, of course, because we, we're, 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 we're the place for games. For place for games. So digital is all about my subs. So we need PlayStation Plus. You want to play online? You want to play FIFA? You want to play Call of Duty? You want to play big games with your friends? You need PlayStation Plus, and we can offer that in store to customers, and they can buy it directly there as they would buy anything else with cash. Um, we've got downloadable content, so additional content for games that. Um, enhances your game, extends it, gives you more experiences, more maps, whatever it may be. You can buy that in store, you can buy it online, and so you can use cash to pay for those as well. And then we've got arcade games, so typically they're a bit cheaper, they might be 10, 15 pounds, but some incredible games available for, um, for PlayStation, which you can buy in store at game, you can take home, and you can play them, and you can download them immediately and start playing. I believe you guys at a game are expecting a big Christmas, you're opening more stores over the Christmas period, hiring more staff. What, what's your expectation for this Christmas? It's going to be the biggest. I mean, four, we've hired over 4,000 additional staff to cope with the demand. I mean, demand is going to significantly outstrip supply. And so these, these, you know, the PlayStation's going to fly off the shelves and we just expect it to be a, an epic season of gaming, as we've been saying, but we really do. And this is, this is, it's not just about today, though. It's not just about the next two months. It's actually about the next five to 10 years. You know, gamers are, getting involved with the PlayStation 4, and this is about them being involved for the next five to 10 years, and we just cannot wait to see what Sony brings to this console over that time. But what can people come into about PlayStation 4? What are the questions that they're asking, and what are they looking forward to when they're coming into the store? Well, first and foremost, they want to know what games can I play, and we're there to take them through those games, depending on whatever, whatever their, their uh, genre or whatever kind of games they like to play. But then they're asking about what are these new additional services, and yeah, there's the sharing capabilities, there's the ability to stream uh, TV, there's the new controller, which everyone's getting extremely excited about. Everyone wants to get their hands on the new controller and feel what it's like and all the new functionality. I think that's one of the things that, that uh, they're really excited. And to be honest, they want to see a console. Because the first time you see one and you hold it, you realize it's a, it's a really fantastic, beautiful piece of kit. 
It's, uh, it's having that hands-on experience then, because you can see you can see online videos, but it's having that experience of the actual con. As always, and you know, we watch we have unboxing videos. We see lots of those on the internet, and they get millions of views and all of this because people want to see what it's like. But there's nothing like that first moment when you plug your console in, you get it all wired up, and you press you, pr you press start, and it comes on. That moment when you're starting your your new console. That excitement is, is just fantastic. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. So, with one, one thing I wanted to ask you about was uh, game social media feeds. You guys, like on a store level, are giving each store quite a lot of control about how they communicate with the customers, which is quite a brave move, but it's working really well, I think. It's a it's total control. I mean, you can't do social and have it have it all corporate and like corporate messaging. That just wouldn't work at all. We're gamers. All of our store staff are gamers, and so the service they give in store at game and the engagement they give with their customers when they walk in store, we just want to give them that to their customers online as well, and that's what they do. And so you'll go on there, you'll read some some fantastic stuff. You'll see them dressing up for for our for our events we have. There'll be people doing all sorts of exciting things across the country tonight. It's just about them being gamers. I mean, part of the UK's most valuable community of gamers. Yeah, we're all gamers in this. Uh, thanks very much, Ian. What's the, what's the first game you're going to play when you get back tonight? I just want to know. I am going to play, very boringly probably, FIFA. FIFA. You're a big FIFA fan. I am. All right, thank, thanks very much, Ian. Uh, check out games offering over at game.co.uk. Hello Access, my name's Nathan Dytum and this is a quick look at the PlayStation app you can use with your PS4 on your iOS or Android device. After you've installed the app on your device, you can sign into your PSN account here, which will give you access to a profile page with your picture, trophies and recent activities. Across the top of the app's main page are easy to see alerts for your notifications, game invites, game alerts and messages. There's a link to the PlayStation Store so you can purchase games and add-ons remotely and, if your PlayStation is on standby, have them downloaded to your machine automatically. You can browse your trophies and compare them with your friends. You can browse your friends and send new requests. And you can keep up to date with everything using the What's New activity feed, which shows what games your friends are playing, what trophies they're earning, and even gives you access to their gameplay live streams. Aside from all the PSN functionality, you can also connect the app directly to your PS4 as long as they're connected to the same Wi-Fi network by selecting the option at the bottom left of the screen. The first time you do this, you'll need to head to the PlayStation App Connection Settings option in the PS4 Settings menu and add a device. This will generate a number to input into the PlayStation app to pair the two together. After this first time, you'll be able to just press Connect to PS4 and select the machine in the menu. The app and PlayStation 4 will stay connected until one of them goes into standby. Once connected, the app can be used as a second screen, as a remote control for navigating PS4's menus, or, our favourite, as a keyboard to make typing messages to friends super easy. And that's a quick overview of the PlayStation app. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions for other how-to videos, let us know in the comments and subscribe to Access for more of our quick guides. Oh, hi! Um, <laughs> we're just about to hand back to Lucy outside, but before we do that, I think we've got another video, haven't we? Yes, we have. We're going to be taking a look at the tech inside the PlayStation 4 while I eat this cake and don't share any of it with Dan. We love numbers here at Access. Seven, for example. But the sheer brain-roasting volume of digits stuffed down PS4's impressive tech trousers has taken our figure lust to wondrous new places. If you're finding yourself befuddled by all the techno chatter, however, we've put together a friendly guide that spells out PS4's objective awesomeness in terms that will ensure you'll never lose another playground dispute ever again. PS4 CPU is an 8-core 8664 AMD Jaguar processor. Or a bloody blah, 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 as Dave likes to call it. Don't be like him. Tell your friends that AMD Processor means developers can now fine-tune their PS4 games with minimum fuss, seeing as how it's a far more friendly component than PS3's cell processor. Those eight cores also mean PS4 will be able to multitask like a champion, downloading patches and game updates in the background while you're happily mowing down Hellgast in a gleaming ultra-pretty futurescape. 
PS4 has a 1.84 teraflop AMD Radeon Next Generation graphics core. Yeah, teraflops. Despite sounding like the terrified flailing of a stranded kipper, a teraflop is actually a unit of computing speed equal to one million million floating point operations per second. In English, that means PS4 can make a trillion decisions in the time it takes Rob to draw Spider-Man really quickly. Decisions like, this bullet is going in your face, I'm going to make these cars shinier than polished logic, and wash, wash, wash with the PS move. PS4 has 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM. First off, 8 gigabytes is a lot. PS3 has 512 megabytes, meaning PS4 has nearly 16 times the memory of its predecessor. This is awesome because it means developers can make bigger, prettier, more complex worlds and create enemies with more fiendish AI than ever before. And the GDDR5 bit? Let's just say it's way better than silly old DDR3, mainly because 5 is bigger than 3. And also G, which means graphics! Look at them! All the graphics! PS4 has a six-speed CAV Blu-ray drive. That's three times faster than PS3's Blu-ray drive, as illustrated in this educational video, where PS3 is represented by Nathan and PS4 by this cheater. Essentially, this means super speedy loading times, reducing the time it takes you to go from this... I want to play Killzone Shadowfall now. ...to this. Go on, then. Confound your mates with your newfound knowledge of PS4's sizzling innards. It'll be like having the biggest, hardest conquer in the history of ever. For more access videos, check out the links on screen right now. And don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I am back outside with some incredibly eager PlayStation woo, fans. Woo. Yeah. 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 Let's do it! Who have been waiting to get their hands on the brand new PlayStation 4. Guys, how long have you been out here? Too long. Hours. Way Hours. too long. 10 a.m. Yeah. 10 a.m. Yeah. yeah, almost 10 a.m. It's 10 a.m. <laughs> hey. Wait, he just got here. <laughs> Don't keep going. My former self got here at 10 a.m. Look, you jumpers in. Right, guys. So you've got your console at midnight. What games are we all getting with getting with it? Let's go around. Killzone. Killzone. <laughs> FIFA 14, NBA 2. Uh, Killzone. 2K14 also. Killzone. <laughs> Killzone. Killzone, agreed. So everyone's getting Killzone. You're wearing a Battlefield hoodie. It was free. It was free. <laughs> what can I say? I love free stuff. But, uh, you know. So there are a ton of games that are coming out on the current generation. Why have you guys held off to get them it was all about on PlayStation? Yeah. This guy, does, he loves 2K, apparently. Yeah. NBA 2K14. Great game. Why PS? Is that what you're saying? Why, you are, why have you guys waited for PS4? So that's a better console. Because it's for the gamers. Yeah. <laughs> I see what you did there. I see what you did there. I approve of that. Yeah, definitely. I grew up on the PlayStation, so that's my, my thing. Yeah. The big thing Sony's been doing is having PlayStation memories. Guys, what are your fondest PlayStation memories? Oh, um. Bat Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront, the far step on that, those games. <laughs> and there's going to be a new one, that's all I'm saying, exactly, I'm so excited. Exactly. What about you? Uh, first time I played Uncharted, it's my fondest memory, yeah. Bit of Nathan Drake? Yeah, definitely. Can't wait for the new one. Hopefully, hopefully they give it out for free. Just saying. <laughs> PlayStation Plus, who knows? What about you? Oh, when I um, got my PS1 when I was a little kid, like I was so excited, it was amazing. So other games that are coming with your bundles, so there's games like Knack, you're going to get Contrast, games like that on PlayStation Plus, you guys excited to play those? Resogun as well? Resogun's really cool, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Defo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just looking forward to like Destiny and um, Watch Dogs. I'm so psyched. I can't. I can't even. So we've got Destiny and Watch Dogs coming, hopefully early next year, hopefully it's not going to get delayed again. Other than that, did you watch the Sony press conference at E3? Did you like some of the games that were on show there? Uh... I don't think I remember that, man. I don't think I do. No. I don't think I remember that. No. You want to skip me on that one edit that part. Show of hands, who has a Vita? Yep. I would win one here today. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that guy down there as well. So are you guys going to try out remote play? So if someone else wants to use your TV, you can just... Whoop, second screen. Boom. Yeah, why not? Yeah, definitely. 
That's the whole fun of it, yeah. yeah you got friends come round who, who weren't lucky enough to get this and they can just come round and like play on with you, so it's so. Guys, thank you very much. Not long to go, and you can get the PlayStation 4. Yeah! yeah. I win! <laughs> We're going to be moving down the queue a little bit. Hiya, what's going on? We're waiting for Knack, been up for the last 10 hours out here. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get Knack, as you can see. A lot of people are knacking me off right now. But yeah, we're really excited. What's going on? You're the first person who's actually said they're very excited to play Knack. What is it about the game that's sort of intriguing you? I just watched the trailer on YouTube and I thought, my God, I need one of those boxes in my life. So, like I said, <laughs> it's worth being tired for. What game are you picking up? Uh, what games are you picking up with your PlayStation? Knack. I'm probably Knack. <laughs> I just come for Knack, to be honest with you. Apart from that, I'm good. And I've got my free hand game. Mark Cerny's going to be very happy. Are yeah. you going to get a PlayStation uh, camera? No. Nope. Just Knack? Just Knack. <laughs> I'm, being, I'm being honest, you know. I can't lie to you. How long have you been out here waiting for your PlayStation? Ten hours. So not long then? No, nah, we're, nearly, we're nearly there, you know what I'm saying? It's worth it. For Knack, I'd do anything, I tell you. <laughs> well, not anything, but most things. So. Thank you very much. Again, not long to wait. Yeah, you can get on with Knack. Guys, so, hi there, you guys want to talk a little bit about how long you've been waiting? You know, not really. No, Come on. Years. Yes. Years. Two years now. Yeah? I'm about to get hands on it. Yes. Have you played on the PlayStation 4 before? Or is this going to be your first time picking first it up? First time. First time. I'm excited, as you can see. Obviously, I'm a bit tired, but it's worth it. How long you been out here? Since 11 o'clock. So you've been keeping warm, keeping well fed and watered? Well, well fed, well everything. Service has been perfect. What are you going to do? What's the first game you're going to play when you pick up your PlayStation? FIFA 14. So FIFA's also out on the current gen. Yeah, I've got that. You've already got it. Yeah. So what is it about it on the next gen that's got you so excited? I've seen trailers for it and it looks really good. So I can't wait to play it. FIFA's my favourite game, so yeah. What other games are you think you're thinking about picking up? Um, probably Call of Duty or Killzone. Big fans of those series? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Call of Duty. Wonderful. Well, the end is almost in sight. Nearly here. One hour left. Have fun. All right, guys, we're going to continue to go down the queue. This guy, Phone Finger. How long have you been out here? Um, since 12 in the morning. Yeah? It's been tiring, but it's well worth it. Is this the first uh, midnight launch you've done for a console? Um, for a console, yeah. Recently I've done it for GTA. For that, it wasn't as big as this. Now this is crazy. There are people all the way down the street. So, what game are you picking up? Um, what game was it? What game was it? Check your leaflet. <laughs> Just Dance 2014. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, um, I'll pick up FIFA 14, Battlefield 4 and NBA. So have you, been, have you been holding off getting those on PlayStation 4 or do you already have them on current gen? Um, FIFA and Battlefield, I have them on PS3. And then I'm just going to do that cashback thing and just get the PS4 versions. But I'm getting NBA today, hopefully, with Killzone. So, so quite a lot of games then. What's going to be the first one you're going to put into your PS4 when you get in? Um, FIFA 14, I need to beat my brother. He says he's better than me, so that's a challenge. Got some training to do. Yeah, but well, Barcelona, they're, they're going to win anyway. It's Barcelona versus Real Madrid, you know, it's, there's no challenge there. Re Barcelona all the way. What about, I mean, some of the other titles on offer? You've got Lego Marvel Super Heroes, Assassin's Creed 4, I mean, Knack. Are you going to pick up any of those? Um, I was hoping for Watch Dogs, but that's, that's been delayed. We've got a little bit of wait for Watch Dogs, but it's going to be worth it. Destiny as well? I don't even know what Destiny is. It is the new game from Bungie, so it's kind of like first-person shooter, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, lot that. of loot, RPG, tons of guns. It's not my style. That sucks. I'll probably wait for Gran Turismo 7 or something. But they delayed that as well, so... It's, if if Polyphony's listening, then bring it out now, like Gran Turismo 7. Polyphony, right now. get on it. Six. Well, 6 Six. is coming out in a couple weeks. coming out on PS3, that's the thing. Number 7's coming out on PS4. So, well. no need to edit that. <laughs> Live stream. Live stream. <laughs> and is inside, thank you. We are going to continue down the queue. Even further, Yay! this is how long it is! Yay! Guys, how long have you been waiting? It's been 11 hours now. It's not that cold. It's a good time. We're all hyped. 
You're hyped for love of the PlayStation. Love of the PlayStation. PS4 for the players. Hashtag. <laughs> so, show of hands, what's everyone getting? So, FIFA? These two. Uh, Killzone. Yay! Call of Duty? Yay! <laughs> Battlefield. Yay! You're getting, getting everything. All of, them. of course. I'm a Sony fanatic. So is this the first midnight launch you've done? No, I went to the last year's one in uh, central London and this is one of the best ones so far. Did you get a free cake? Yes, got the free cake, free blanket, Domino's, yeah. thanks to all the teams that have supported Sony, Red Bull, Domino's, yeah, they're doing it well. So uh, you guys have games, you've been out here 11 or so hours, as soon as you get home, what's the first thing going in that disc tray? Oh, uh, Battlefield. Assassin's Creed. Yeah? Why have you guys held off on getting them on next gen and not on current gen? Um, I think it's just like mainly, mainly because a lot of my people I know have bought me games on PS4. So I don't want them just sitting around not being used. <laughs> I don't want them gathering dust. Yeah. It'd be rude. I don't want to be one of the first people to say, yeah, I've got one of the first PS4s. How do you feel? <laughs> So PS4 has a ton of exciting new features. I mean, there's a new party chat system, improved multiplayer, you know, all this kind of stuff. What has got you guys the most excited? I think the graphics is one of the main things, the speed and the quality of the games is much better now. Yeah? What about the PlayStation Plus? You guys subscribers? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we definitely, definitely subscribe, definitely. Yeah. Been there from years ago. Yeah. yeah? What's the best thing you've got from PlayStation Plus? Other than online storage, which is, for me, <laughs> the best bit about it. I think, uh, multi-packs for certain games they give you a lot of stuff extra even like uh, updates and news feeds that's the main thing knowing about what's coming out soon Are you guys excited about having a bigger friends list definitely yeah because yeah, my friends list is full now and uh, <laughs> i've got too many friends on playstation yeah well guys thank you very much thank you. you've got just over an hour to wait so here at the PlayStation Lounge, amidst all these excited fans, we also have UK chart sensation Tiny Temper in the house. Uh, so everyone's very excited about that. But we also have some of the games playable that people can play on their brand new PlayStation 4s when they pick it up from midnight tonight. So on top of those games, we've got things like Lego Marvel Super Heroes. There is Battlefield 4, Call of Duty, Ghost, Assassin's Creed 4, if you get PlayStation Plus, you can get games like Resogun, Contrast. Really, guys, the sky is the limit. Brand new DualShock 4 is in there as well. And if you pick up the PlayStation camera, you can get Toy Box. So really, what more could you want? So everyone in the queue here is looking pretty excited. It's just over an hour to go. And then the queue can start moving in, picking up those PlayStation 4s, go home and play them. So without further ado, we're gonna head back into the lounge and see what is going on in there. Peggy 18. The best thing about developing for the PlayStation 4 is we aren't forced to concentrate on the limits. We're able to concentrate on the immersion and the experience. Technology no longer limits our imagination. I know I can actually interact with the stuff I love everywhere I am without any barriers. This new hardware lets us create a huge world full of life and action. It's bigger than anything we've been able to do before. Never really been approached in terms of size uh, of the world, in terms of freedom, uh, in terms of feeling of exploration. The truth is you'll, you'll feel the difference. You reach a level of true expression. PlayStation. 
to the PlayStation Lounge here in central London. I'm joined by a very special guest now. It's Mr. Andrew House, who is the group CEO for Sony Computer Entertainment. Andrew, thanks for joining me. Not at all, guys. My pleasure. So this is obviously the culmination, here in the UK at least, of a massive amount of work for you. How does it feel? Um, it's just, you know, so exciting, so energizing. Um, I was able to walk the line earlier on. And, you know, for me, there's nothing like actually talking to people who, you know, really engage with our products, enjoy playing the games that we deliver. Uh, and that's just fantastic to, you know, get that kind of positive feedback. It's why we get up and do, you know, what we do every day. And um, getting a lot of that feedback here tonight, most of it, almost all of it uniformly positive and people very excited as we are about a brand new launch. So you guys toiling away long nights, presumably in the background. You don't get to you see on the forums and everything, but actually seeing people turn up and being excited, and you know, turning up on Monday, days before it launches, must be really nice to see that for you guys. No, I mean it, it's just great to see people being you know hugely enthusiastic about what we do. Um, yes, I mean you know I I, I pay a little bit of tribute or a great tribute to our engineering teams back in Tokyo. Um, you know, they really have worked night and day uh, to try and put together a system that will, you know, delight, we hope, millions of consumers around the world. Uh, and I hope that, you know, at least I can channel some of that excitement back for them tonight so that, you know, they're more motivated and feel a sense of fulfillment about what they're doing. So, Andrew, you, you've worked on every PlayStation launch through, through Sony's history. How does PlayStation 4 compare to the PS3 and PS2? Um, I think that, you know, it's reminded me very much of the sense of excitement of a brand new foray into entertainment that we have with PlayStation 2. Um, I actually sort of wanted to build a bit of an homage uh, to the PlayStation 2 into the physical design of the console. Uh, maybe that's come, to, come through to some people. Uh, and maybe there was a statement of intent there. Um, you know, we learned a lot through every platform that we've launched. Uh, we had fantastic times and fantastic success with PlayStation 2. Um, we learned a lot through PlayStation 3. Um, in some cases, I think it was a little bit of a humbling experience for us. It's just encountering a number of the challenges that we did. But hopefully, we've channeled that back into some really good energy in the company uh, of learning where you know we need to have our focus, which is in two places. It's focusing on the gamer, on the end consumer. That's who we make our products for. But it's also focusing on game developers, the people who are creating those great game experiences that are going to delight our fan base. And that's been our you know, absolute single focus on PlayStation 4, and hopefully that comes through to the people that are going to buy the system tonight and from now on. I think it's really looking at the PlayStation Memories advertising campaign. It's, there's some really iconic stuff in there, going right back to the original PlayStation. I remember it very well. Designers Republic, very iconic graphics, and then moving through to the PlayStation 2. There's so much, you know, so many memories there for a player. What's it like for you working on PlayStation? Is it, uh, it like, just explain the, the past year for you? Well, I think it's a, it's a, it's a dual reaction because uh, on the one hand, it's a fantastic trip down memory lane. On the other hand, it's reminding me of just how old I am right now, which is not perhaps the best memory that I, you know you really want to carry away. Now, I think it's been good to sort of reflect back on our on our past, um, you know, to remind people a little bit, hopefully that we've been a part of their lives and a part of their entertainment experience, uh, but also to remind ourselves of, you know, here's our heritage, this is where we've come from, and this is where, you know, we're gonna leap from here to hopefully build great things in the future. So you, you, uh, PlayStation's been very, very vocal about working with indie developers this, this time around, really, really focusing on that, and that's really exciting for me as well. I love the indie titles. What, what are you most excited about coming from indie developers like Mike Bithell at the moment? What's really getting you excited? Um, I, um, I'm really excited about you know Jonathan Blow's new creation. Uh, I got to spend time with him uh, at the New York event, and, and, and since then, um, he, he's just such an interesting take on what games could be and what play experiences can be. Um, I also just love Octodad because it just brings a smile to my face every time I see any visuals associated with it. So I haven't had a chance to play it myself yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. But on, on a serious note, I mean, I think what we've tried to do with independent developers, for me, is getting us back to the roots of what PlayStation was. Um, a lot of people may forget, but, you know, when we first brought games out on these little shiny discs, it kind of changed the industry and allowed for smaller teams, smaller companies to take risks and bring something that's new and different in games. Um, now with digital distribution, uh, with, you know, the growth of mobile developers, we've kind of gone back to that, of the, the opportunity for, you know, teams however small to, you know, really take an idea and build it into something new. 
And you know, we view our role really very simply as a platform holder to you know, find great games, great talent, and just connect them with an audience. And, and, and that's really what we're, we're trying to do here. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you've got uh, studios like Gorilla, and then the Japan studio with Knack, and then further down the line, Sucker Punch and Uncharted, the guys with Uncharted. What's coming up that's really exciting you in the, in the AAA space? You've got so much to look forward to. Um, purely personal, uh, the order uh, is you know, really ranking up their high for me. I'm a big history fan. I love anything that deals with alternate reality. I'm a big fan of Neil Gaiman and you know it's got all of the feel of that kind of experience. So that was the one when um, Shu Yoshida presented it to me, got the big thumbs up from Andy. Yeah. And so what, uh, what would you recommend when people get their PlayStation 4 tonight? What would be the one thing that you will do when you get their console home? What would you recommend people do? What's the killer feature for you? Um, I think, well, number one, make sure that you know you sign up for the network, make sure that you are in a position to connect with a great community of players. Um, but I would just, look, pick your favorite game, fire it up, sit back, and have a great time. And on a personal level, what does Andrew House play when he gets a little bit of time off, hopefully after this launch, although you've got more, more launches to come, what's the game that you play at home? Um, Andy House has gone relatively old school recently and has rediscovered Journey right. and, uh, and is enjoying it all over again. And, and Flower as well, obviously that's coming to play. Flower I've got to get to a little bit. Time's been a little bit pressurised in the last couple of months, but um, hopefully with the launch done I'll, I'll get a little bit more time on the couch. You're launching the, the, in the UK tonight. What's next? You going? You said you were going to France next. You're doing a big tour. Uh, yeah, I'm, well, I, I, I was in New York for the US launch. That was, you know, fantastic. Great response. A million units sold in 24 hours, which was, you know, beyond our expectations. Um, here in, you know, back in sort of my hometown uh, for tonight, which is wonderful. And yeah, and off to Paris first thing tomorrow morning. So you must be like tired, but also ju you know, jubilant about launching this thing in the UK, which you said is kind of your home. I, I got to say, you know, for me personally, it's it's just been one of the most exciting years that I've ever seen for the company and for the business, and and hopefully that excitement, you know, communicates itself itself out to our fans out there as well. Andrew, it's been a real pleasure. Really, really appreciate it. My pleasure. All the best, and uh, let's check out a launch of the Ultimate PlayStation 4 compilation. Peggy 18. is doing it's doing indie games and I am with an indie trio of awesome the amazing Shahid 
the wonderful James from Future Lab, and Mike Mithel is currently working on volume and uh, creator of Thomas Was Alone. Now, I think we'll start, first of all, by talking to our developers. Uh, James, you can go first. Tell us a little bit about Future Lab and the game that you guys are currently working on. Uh, so, Future Lab is a small team of 10 based in Brighton. Uh, we're working with Shahid on PS4, uh, creating a sequel to our original game, Velocity, uh, which is a top-down shoot-em-up. Uh, did quite well. Um, we've got Sony's support to uh, take it to the next level, and we're taking uh, a top-down shoot-em-up and a platformer and smashing them together. Smashing it together. Uh, Dan, would you like to take it over to Mike and talk oh, well, about his game? Well, you've already enjoyed Hey, great to see you. <laughs> we really need to do this more often. This we is should. Yeah, it's great. It's I'm nice. meeting in a sweaty environment with yeah, samba music. It's just the way yeah, to be. It's just lovely. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've already enjoyed like great success with Thomas Was Alone on PS3 and Vita, and now you're working on the uh, on vol the well, slightly less mysterious than it was volume. What, yeah. uh, what can you tell the viewers about it? So um, it's a stealth game. Um, it's you sneak around. You don't kill people. It's Robin Hood, but Robin Hood's a let's player, and he commits crimes in a holodeck. I'm not entirely sure it's going to work, but I've got a good idea. We'll see. But Danny Wallace makes a return, and you've also got uh, another notable voice talent this time. Yeah, so Danny's back because he's awesome. Um, and Charlie McDonald, who's a really awesome uh, video maker, YouTuber. AKA Charlie is so cool like. Yeah. Charlie is so cool like. I, I've been a fan of his since, I, since he started, since he was about 16. Uh, which sounds weird when I say it like that, but it's all right. Um, like you and 10 million giggling girls. Well, this is it. My, my little sister screams down the phone for about 20 minutes when I told her, it was great. But yeah, he's great and he's doing a great job. And Shahid, I mean, it, it must be a pleasure kind of seeing these guys coming together and all kind of, at least initially, exclusively on PlayStation 4. Oh, it, I've got the greatest job in the world. You know, I can just lean back and watch this revolution happening around me. These are some of the smartest guys in the business today. And they talk about luck a lot. You know, I hear them always talking about being really, really lucky. But it's amazing how often they make their luck. They work really, really hard. They're always in the right places, doing the right things, saying the right things, making the right things. They work their socks off, and they're making some fantastic games for PlayStation. And I couldn't be more proud. Oh, you do. You look so proud. It's so lovely to see. But James, tell us a little bit about what it's been like for you guys working with PlayStation. Uh, the Future Lab journey for the Velocity to the Ultra to 2X has been You've started on mobile and all the way through. So tell us a little bit about what it's been like getting the, the support for an indie studio at PlayStation. Okay, so um, we started uh, as a three-man team making a, a PS Minis game, uh, Velocity. And uh, everyone around us um, was saying things like, uh, you know, mobile's going to kill console, and uh, why are you doing this? You should be making a game for, you know, a mobile phone. And uh, we just that just didn't sit right with me. And um, I'm really glad we stuck to our guns because, uh, you know, we, we, we talked to the guys at Sony, showed them what we wanted to do, and uh, they supported us with a PlayStation Plus deal, uh, which allowed us to finish the first game. And uh, so thank you, Agostino. Um, and then uh, we got some really nice reviews and uh, built a fan base based on that. And uh, Shahid uh, had a go on it on a Sunday afternoon and uh, texted me about four hours later after I'd given him a code saying, I'm a 40-year-old man, I should not be playing a shoot 'em up on a Sunday. Um, I, we need to sign this up for Vita, uh, let's talk. And since then, it's just been a bit of a roller coaster. Um, we've got amazing support. Uh, it's great to work on PS4 and, and PlayStation Vita, and uh, we're just really excited. That's amazing. Now, Shahid, how do, you, how do you find this talent? Because there's so much out there, and how do they find you? And how do you sit there and go, that's it, that's the one? It's a great question. There's an amazing community out there. They're all very well connected. They all talk to each other. Uh, they're all progressing at an incredible rate. Um, the vibe is amazing. There are forums, there are jams, there are events all over the world. It's just a wonderful, vibrant scene. All you've got to do is immerse yourself in it, and they're everywhere. And sooner or later, you're going to find people, actually, sooner rather than later these days. Uh, but as I said, these guys really are at the vanguard of that revolution. I'm really, really proud they work really hard, not just on their ideas, but on their businesses as well and their whole approach. It's just been a wonderful, wonderful time for us at PlayStation. I'm really enjoying working with them. Now, one of the wonderful things about indie games is what you guys achieve with the tools that you have. Now, the wonderful Mike Bithell here is, has done this very much. Thomas Was Alone, a game about friendship and jumping, about little boxes, and you made us all care about those little boxes. What's it like as an indie developer trying to bring that big game experience to a game made in a one-man team? Wow. Well, that's very kind of you. Thank you. I need to play it. Sounds amazing. 
Um, yeah, no, it's awesome. It's terrifying and brilliant. We're at a time where indies can make bigger games. Uh, the tools got easy. Uh, the level of access we have uh, to people like Sony is amazing. And it just means that we're free now to actually make whatever the hell we want. And we're trusted to do it, which is just fantastic. Again, I'm, an, I'm a chancer, and I don't know how any of this happened. Um, but it's very cool. I'm enjoying myself a great deal. Do you think it's indie games uh, transcending kind of between home console uh, and handheld as well? Broaden the appeal of it because uh, PCs can be seen as, even though that's PCs are seen as kind of the spiritual home of indie gaming. Do you think bringing it to the console is really how it's going to reach the masses? The thing that amazed me when I launched when I launched Thomas uh, was just the difference in the audience. That there is this amazing scale of audience who don't play games on PC, who play games on console. We're all nerds. We all have very nice computers and games consoles and all this stuff. But to see people actually having this one device, which they rely on, really, of course I want to make games for that. And the cross-platform thing is just awesome. Like um, the, with with uh, like crossplay on Thomas, just being able to play it on both devices, like that's awesome. And it's really cool to be able to take my experiences that I've created and put them onto those those various places and let people play. It's it's freedom and it's great. It's absolutely, it's exactly what made Hotline Miami for me. It was just like being able to play it from home and then hop over and take it on the bus and keep killing people on the bus. <laughs> take out all the frustrations of the London commute. <laughs> now, obviously, I think people watching, some of whom may have tried out a little bit of development, are probably going to be inspired by these guys to like try it for themselves. So what, what advice would you give them, like trying to get your attention and trying to get their titles on PlayStation 4? Well, there's never been a better time to get started in video games development. There are many initiatives. I mean, you could start at university. You could get university registered on the PlayStation First scheme. That's one way. Um, you can just download tools. You can start with Unity, for example. You can start with Game Maker. You can get registered as a developer with us. It's really, really straightforward. Uh, tweet me at Shahid Kamal. I'll help you at any time of the day and sometimes the night. And and just get going. We'll help you get going. You know, we've often loaned development kits to really promising developers. So there's never really been a better time. It's, there's never been a better time to learn about video games development or more fantastic people to learn from. So in that regard, you think it's important to have the same the same level of kind of transparency communication that indie developers are kind of known for internally as well, and that you can represent a kind of a public face for that, that arm of Sony Europe. I think it's becoming increasingly important to be public, to be open, to be accessible. It's the way the indie community works, right? You know, they talk about things in a very, very open way, and that's how the art form moves forward quickly. You know, you iterate more quickly, um, you get new ideas more quickly, you share, you evolve, you refine, and you get onto the next level really, really fast. about Velocity 2X. Now you guys are living the dream, it's not just PlayStation 4, you're also coming to Vita as well. Let's talk a little bit about how Velocity is, is mixing it up. It's not just a shoot 'em up it's not just a platforming game, but you guys are taking it all and living the indie dream by making exactly what you want. Tell us a little yeah. bit about that. We're very lucky. Um, so it's, it starts off as being a shoot 'em up uh, but we've introduced teleportation, uh, speed runs, um, uh, puzzles, and we've taken everything that worked in the first game and applied it to a, a platforming game. So you can uh, fly around in your spaceship, uh, you know, taking out foes, uh, solving puzzles, teleporting, and then you can dock your spaceship, get out and run around on foot, and do exactly the same thing on foot. Um, so we're just we're taking a racing game, puzzle game, shoot 'em up platformer, and putting them all together in, in a way that works and feels nice to play. So what was that like for you guys as, uh, as designers and coders? To make a game originally on the Vita and then go, all right, now we're going to put this on PS4. Is that that been a lovely, easy transition? Were there any difficulties? So easy. <laughs> the right answer. So we drew all the artwork in HD, hoping that we get on PS4 one day. And then the, and then the call came. So we just uh, pressed a button. And uh, there we go. Well, there you go, guys. The indie trio of awesome. Thank you so much for your time. And I think to finish this bit off, let's go to our indie mashup video. So that was E3 2013 then, a year of gleaming next-gen horses, PS4's triumphant reveal, and more blockbusters than Arnie's DVD cabinet. It was also the year PlayStation's indie family took centre stage to showcase the weird, wonderful and downright hilarious titles heading our way on PS4.
The first game on our indie hit list is brought to you by the word mystery. Mystery Island, Mystery Puzzles, Mystery Record Player in the Middle of Nowhere, and also by the word brilliant, seeing as how The Witness is being crafted by Jonathan Blow of Braid fame, and so can't be anything but. A sun-soaked setting and vivid colour palette provide the eye pampering, while a bunch of maze-based noggin teasers mean puzzle enthusiasts will be in next-gen heaven. Then up-stepped critical darling Supergiant Games to show off an enigmatic trailer for their PS4 indie offering, Transistor. Not enigmatic enough though. With our expert powers of deduction, we've figured out that Transistor will feature clobbering things with a massive sword, a striking cyberpunk art style, and whatever that thing is. But seriously, we can't wait! Don't Starve is a Burton-esque 2D monster-smacking adventure from Clay Entertainment, the chaps behind Ace PSN offering Shank and Mark of the Ninja, while Mercenary Kings brings the retro awesome with its bullety brand of side-scrolling, hand-drawn multiplayer action. And then it's off to Bonkersville for Octodad, Dadliest Catch, a game about a rogue land-dwelling cephalopod who somehow managed to get a job and a wife without anyone realising he's an octopus. He's even got kids. Like, how on earth has he actually managed that, logistically? The correct answer is, of course, who cares? And then, let's stop worrying and play Secret Ponchos, a slick top-down shooter wrapped in a gorgeous spaghetti western aesthetic. Then comes Raise the Dead, which wins both our award for Best Pun of E3 2013, and also Happiest Developer to be on stage in front of thousands of hammer-swinging journos. Yes, hello. Although if any of them came up with a verdict other than Zombies, PS4, awesome, then they're wrong and idiots. Bringing the scares was Oh Good Lord Run Simulator Outlast, which looks every bit as scary as its Mount Massive Asylum setting sounds, while bringing the nostalgic cheers was famed indie creator Lorne Lanning, with Oddworld Abe's Odyssey New and Tasty, a classic platform series given a shiny PS4 kiss. And then came Galaxy, a sprawling 2D space shooter with more lasers than a 90s rave, and visuals so slick you could slip on them before we got mega excited for the glorious quirks of Ho Hokum, an arty title from Honey Slug, the creators of So Funny It'll Make Your Kidneys Burst PS Vita title Frobisher says. It wasn't just PS4 stuffing its face with indie treats, however. Over in current gen land, both PS3 and PS Vita were enjoying a few side-scrolling cocktails of their own. Ibn Ob is a whimsical co-op puzzler forcing you and a friend to think your way through a bunch of fiendish puzzles and also argue about which of you has to be upside down. Dragon Fantasy Book 2 whisked us back to the days of 8-bit role players with its pleasing brand of 2D giant enemy crab smacking and screen filling bosses. And all we're going to say about this game is the title. Floating Cloud God Saves the Pilgrims in HD. I think that sums it up quite nicely. Contrast is a noir-flavoured adventure infused with jazz and the ability to move through shadows, actually through them. While rounding up our roundup, we've got Doki Doki Universe, a charming world where you can create your own hand-drawn playground before visiting those of your friends. Also features an alien called Jeff. Sold. Bottom line, there's never been a better time to dive headfirst into PlayStation's indie pool. So get in there and get swimming. If you want to see more Access videos, here's a fine selection for you to enjoy. And don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. Just over half an hour to go and the crowd are getting really excited. So not only will they be able to pick up their PlayStation 4s this evening, but if, if they've already got a PlayStation Vita, they'll be able to use the remote play feature, which means you can use your handheld as a second screen, which is amazing. So if you're sat there on the couch playing your PlayStation 4, someone wants to use the TV, it is no problem because you can transfer that screen directly onto your Vita, which is a pretty impressive piece of kit. You can use it over Wi-Fi and it travels pretty far indeed. So enough from me. Here's a little bit of a video that can explain it in much more detail. Hello, Access. My name's Nathan and I'm here with Holly. 
And I am playing Knack. I'm going to make Knack jump. But Holly, what, the reason I'm really here is not just to play Knack, it's to find out how remote play works with PlayStation 4. And you are about to explain it to me. I am about to explain it to you. It's really, really simple. So you're playing Knack at the moment. Yes. But let's say I want to use the TV for something else. Mm -hmm. Take PlayStation VR. Let's get it all turned on. Now, if you have the latest update for your PlayStation Vita, the PlayStation 4 link will be present. You're going to press this, and we'll start. And we're going to hit remote play at the top. So we're in a Wi-Fi connection at the moment. So now it's in the Wi-Fi connection. It's just searching for the PlayStation 4 console over there. Yep. It's now found it, so it's just connecting to the console. And any minute now, oh. you're going to lose control of Knack. You won't be able to control him from the, the PlayStation Some 4. Some might say I never had control. I like it, well done. Thank you. But there you go, that is it. You are now connected and you're playing that on your PlayStation Vita. And it's also on the television at the same time. Also on the television exactly the same time. And presumably the profile which is on the PlayStation Vita at the moment, it matches the one which is playing the game on the PlayStation 4. Yeah, both are signed into the same PSN account. Cool. Now let's say, because this is quite confusing having both screens open. For me, yes. But let's say I want to play PlayStation 3 because chances are like me, you've still got plenty of games you probably haven't finished with PlayStation 3 yet. Let's change it over, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry on playing Journey. I'm not even going to look up, I'm going to carry on playing that. So there you go guys, that is our look at remote play, just how quickly it connects, it's looking great, we've lost Nathan to Mac, and that you guys can subscribe to the YouTube channel for more PlayStation 4 videos. So I'm here with Connor, who I met earlier in the queue, who has got his ticket, his lucky golden, it's not golden, it's not. but you've got your ticket to grab blue, your PlayStation like 4. Else. Great colour. Yeah. The Sony blue. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to talk a little bit about Vita, because you have one, don't you? Mm, yeah. No, um, it's, I just think it's like one of the great things that they're doing at the moment. Like, they're really like, it's just about like communicating between all the different devices. It's like, I don't know, they're really considering how like they can link up everyone, everyone likes to play together. And so like you could go to a friend's house with your PS Vita and just like whack it up on the screen and play it and show it off. They they gave us a demo of like a really a really great new game that they Sony have like funded called Velocity. And like we tried that out. Like they they gave us the PS Vita just to play with. Like, I forgot mine today, but it was just really fun. Like they've been really like looking after us all day and then to give us like these demos while we're still queuing, not even inside, or like haven't we haven't made like a payment yet and then I just I don't know, PS4 really seemed considerate of what we want to do so yeah so i mean do you have to fight for fight for your tv space a lot in your house you reckon no no, no, no. I'm, I'm i'm fairly lucky in that sense i guess i've got a tv up in my room so uh yeah i, I hide away <laughs> my my parents wonder what i'm doing up there right. <laughs> so on the playstation 3 it was introduced the cross play feature which meant so games like street fighter cross tekken uh you can play on your big screen but also someone can be playing on the vita as well but this is one step further you can actually have the full PlayStation 4 screen on your Vita. You're going to be using that, do you reckon? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think like, like if I just want to like play a game, or if I know I'm about to go out, then I could like, and I in a car journey, like before, like before a car journey, I could just be playing on my screen in the, with, with my Vita, and then just take it straight back to the Vita and just head out with it. And I haven't even like stopped playing. Like I don't need to if I'm in going into just on a drive, something boring and. No stop for me, yeah. <laughs> so one of the great things about the PlayStation Plus service is that it gave the Vita owners a ton of content for free every month. Have you used it? Mm -hmm. I haven't, I haven't, yeah. I've, I've been, I'm so, I also, I get addicted to computer gaming, so I'm, I've been saving it for the PS4, you know, I, I get to, I get, so I get to really enjoy it when I get it all together. But yeah, it's, it's something to look forward to. Well, Connor, thank you very much. Yeah, just, just about half an hour to go. Oh, yeah. Well, we've, we've been in and we, I've seen, I saw, I saw it get put in a bag, so really excited, but yeah. Bag with your name on it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right, and we have another here. What's your name, sir? I'm Marcus. Marcus, do you have a Vita?
Yeah, I'm a pretty big, fan, big Vita fan, to be honest. What's your favourite game on Vita? Uh, at the moment, I've been playing a lot of Disgaea 3, actually. I've been playing quite a lot of, um, but I've been playing everything, really. Have you been playing Tearaway? Uh, I haven't actually. Actually, at the moment, I've been. Uh, I was the next game I was going to start playing was Dragon's Crown, but I haven't actually started that yet. Um, but yeah, I will. I am. I was looking towards that, and I probably will pick it up sometime soon. So, are you going to be able to use the Vita amazing remote play feature? Yes, that's what I've, I've been looking for. Forward to more support for that because uh, kind of been a bit lacking on that front. But uh, hopefully, they pick up more support and it gets a lot better in that way. Because I've been looking forward to that for quite a while. Did you use crossplay at all? Yeah, uh, that's what I was looking, that's why I was getting a uh, Dragon's Ground and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so I was looking forward to do that. Amazing. So, out of all the titles for your Vita, what would you say is your favourite? Uh, my favourite, probably Project Diva. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've not played that one. What is Project Diva? Uh, it's a Japanese game. Uh, Hatsune Miku, big deep, uh, idol in Japan. Uh, it's just a rhythm-based game, and that's the kind of games that I play. So I'm a big music game fan, so that's why I like that game. So do you have PlayStation Plus at all? Do you use that for to get your Vita games, or do you typically just download them from the PlayStation Store? I do have PlayStation Plus. Uh, at the moment, I need a bigger memory card because I can't fit any more games on it. Uh, but I do have quite a lot of games that I need to download and play. Um, what kind of what games are you looking forward to on the PlayStation Vita on the PlayStation 4? Uh, on the PlayStation Vita on PlayStation 4. At the moment, I'm actually quite drawing blanks. Um, on the PlayStation Vita, there, to be honest, there isn't that much at the moment. But um, apart from Terraway, um, but yeah, I am looking forward to more games because I'm hopefully that they will pick up more support on the PlayStation Vita. As someone that's had it since launch. I was a bit worried that it was going to be forgotten about, but they are picking up, so I'm quite happy about that. Well, Marcus, thank you very much. Not long to go. Guys, we are going to go back into the PlayStation Lounge now to see what's going on. Peggy 18. So I'm out here with Mary and James, who are two very hardworking game employees who've been working at it all day to make sure that all of these people in this crowd get their PlayStation 4s at midnight. Guys, run me through your day. So when it started... Stock delivery yeah. turned up, unboxed a lot of consoles, got everything in the stock room all ready to go. Yeah, unpacking 400 consoles, all the games, all the controllers getting the tills set up, making sure everyone's, everyone in the queue's happy, keeping, the, keeping the, the queue excited. We've had some very positive reports from the queues. They've had cake, they've had pizza. The drinks, yeah. 
everything to keep them well fed and <laughs> in time Some for lovely midnight. blankets going on. <laughs> home fingers as well. Absolutely. Keep those away from Miley You've Cyrus. Love the but home fingers. <laughs> <laughs> gotta love them. <laughs> so 400 PlayStation 4s, and I mean, I've seen them, I've been in that stock room. I'm amazed and a bit disappointed that there wasn't a fort. Guys, <laughs> what's going on there? We'll work on it for you. We'll let you know when it's done. Might just hide in it. <laughs> Absolutely, if That's you don't plan, see us. Yeah. <laughs> so it's about 20 minutes to go. Yeah. Are you guys mentally prepared yes. for the rush? I think yeah. so. Yeah, we've, uh, we've just had a bit of pizza, had some to drink, we've kind of refueled, we're Chocolate. ready for the, the big good. push. Very exciting. So you guys, have you, are you picking up PlayStation 4s yourselves? Do you have some like secretly tucked away? Not here, but I will be getting one. Yeah, absolutely. James, what are you? It's all pre-ordered, yeah. Everything's in. What games are you guys going to pick up? Uh, I'm getting Knack, Assassin's Creed and Call of Duty. Hopefully. <laughs> what about you? I don't know yet. Just lucky. See, yeah, see, see what I get. You'll get all of them. All of them. Everything, yeah. yeah. So you're picking up Call of Duty and Assassin's Have you held off? Uh, better graphics, um, and I just think it's going to be exciting to play them on something new. So, yeah, looking forward to it. So, of all the other features, what are you guys kind of looking forward to? I mean, there's, so there's, you know, sharing online, there's bigger friend lists, there's, the, I mean, the lovely touchpad on the DualShock 4. I think the touchpad's yeah. quite exciting, yeah. I'm looking forward to having a go on that, get a camera at some point and uh, give it a go. It should be excellent. Uh, I mean, that camera as well, I mean, I kind of very excited to see because I've played a little bit of Playroom. Have you guys been just playing it around in the stores? Not yet. No, not had a chance. Been too busy. Okay, Even under ready. lock and key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> so, I mean, how long have you guys been preparing to kind of deal with the launch of this magnitude? Because I mean, there is a there is a lot of people here. Months. months. And months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a there's a big team being involved in in getting not just tonight together, but in over 300 stores around the country. They're all open to kind of make everyone's PlayStation 4 brilliant, you know, get, I it, don't get it all think, there. I don't think there's been anyone in head office who hasn't been involved <laughs> in some point, and certainly in the stores, everyone's been yeah. very much involved. So everyone, this is a big team effort in game. Yeah, excitement's yeah. amazing. I just, just can't wait for, for midnight to come. So you guys, I mean, you said over 300 stores are open at midnight so people can get their hands on it. Got any words of support for those game workers who are going to be there all night? Just enjoy it. Um, Keep only, comes around, only comes around once every. <laughs> well, exactly, you know, once in a lifetime. Enjoy get, it. Get stocked up on, on drink and chocolate. Stay and hydrated. Yeah, yeah. And uh, good luck. Have a good sleep yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> have a lie in. Yeah. Although Absolutely. probably won't be able to because we... people will be. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Next wave. But we're looking forward to it. It's going to be epic. So are you guys going to go straight to bed, or is it just a cheeky little go on something, or? Ooh, we'll see what, how yeah. long it goes on for tonight. <laughs> what time we finish. It's quite a big queue that we've got to serve, but so looking forward to it. Yeah. So, have you guys, is this the first launch uh, you guys have done for Sony? Or, I mean, did you guys do the Vita? I mean, the Vita wasn't that. I mean, in terms of launches, this is insane. Vita was. PSP, the PS3, the Vita, and the, and the PS4, and the PS4, I think it's been the biggest that I've ever seen. So, it looks incredible. What about you, James? This is my first one, so, you know, starting, starting high. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's going to come back from this. And all in lovely blue as well. Yeah, yeah rocking, the, rocking the yeah. blue today. <laughs> yeah. So much as well. You guys are really using that dual screen kind of... I'd like, I'd like to. I haven't had a go on it yet, comparing the two, but I've got a Vita at home waiting, so we'll see how it goes. Um, but definitely, definitely we'll be giving it a go. Yeah, just once we get, once we get our hands on that console. Yeah, yeah that's definitely. it. <laughs> I mean, so, for game as retailers, this is huge, isn't it? Massive. Yeah. This, is, this is the epic season of gaming. You know, it doesn't get better than this. I so. mean, it's all in the run-up to Christmas as well. Yeah. You guys going to keep stocked? Definitely, yeah, we're working around the clock to kind of keep all our customers happy um, so that, you know, everyone's happy on Christmas Day. They've got that nice, nice shiny box under the Christmas tree. <laughs> shiny blue box. Shiny blue box yep. under the Christmas tree. Yeah. So, guys, I mean, gaming generally, when you're not doing huge launches like this, what do you guys like to play? I love Assassin's Creed. Absolutely love it. Uh, bit of a Final Fantasy person as well. Those two keep me very busy. Very busy. Mario. 
Mario. Yeah. <laughs> Classic Mario. <laughs> uh, FIFA. Not very good at it, but it's good fun. <laughs> Are you going to be picking up FIFA 14? Potentially, yeah. I've just got to see what I can get my hands on. But yeah, FIFA so. 14 it's meant been... to be amazing on the, the new console. So yeah, so looking forward to, to seeing that. And you can share your gameplay clips online of hopefully your scoring goals and yeah, yeah. scoring goals. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. Best of luck in there. Thank you very much. Cheers. I'll talk to you soon. So one of the big new features of the PlayStation 4 is the brand new control. We've got buttons are uh, just look great. We have uh, brand new triggers, a brand new touchpad, and that lovely blue glow on the back. But there is a little bit more about it that we can learn. So let's cut to a video. We've got a PS4 to play. Do you want to be one of the first people in the world to play? Peggy 7. Just go slow, little buddy. You'll be fine. Behold Knack. Knack is capable of explosive growth. He will be invaluable in the fight against the goblins. The tunnels go on for miles. No telling what the goblins are up to. There you go. Wow. Stay back. It's a new look for me. What do you think? Cool. I'm getting chills. A golem made of relics. Those are security beams. If we break those beams, we're toast. Over here. Stop him. Peggy 16. My name is Abigail Walker, but my friends and enemies call me Fetch. I've never hurt an innocent person in my life. Hey, Reg, that conduit struck again. Gotta stroll through the security checkpoint first, and then I'll scope it out. That's two out of three. Delta. Delta, you all right, brother? What happened? Come on, get up. 
Get up. I know just where to put filth like this. She won't be hurting anybody else. What do you think I'm doing to the DUP? When it comes to conduits, it's my call. Not yours, not ours, mine. <laughs> Meeting new people. Peggy, eighteen. Thirty years ago, it was theft and treachery and aggression that led to the slaughter of a billion Hellgast lives. You have no idea how sickening this is to us. Forced to live here, alongside the people who destroyed our planet. I'm not going to harm you. I want to end this, not start another war. Vasari's doing this because she doesn't think she has a choice. If you attack, she will not back down. She'd be defending her people, their home. This is all we have. Hey, stop! Stop! This is our home, too! <laughs> we must have the right to defend ourselves against foreign aggressors and by whatever means necessary. If we didn't know it before, we know it now. The Hellgast mean to destroy us. We have nothing but a wall to separate us from this evil. It is only a matter of time. They will attack again. This... this is what you do? I came here to destroy this. Don't lie to me, you came here to bury the truth. Your beliefs! you into the wilderness, alone, without faith. This is Vector. This is our home. And it always will be. I want you to remember that. Insane. This is the epicenter of it all. Right, you've all got numbers on your wristbands. Um, right, we need numbers 1 to 20 to come into this queue. Whoa! So 1 to 20, come on down. Look at this, man. I've not seen so many happy faces in a long time. You just oh. want a hug. You can have a hug. We do hugs. Do you, do you have to get a wristband that. to get a hug from Holly as well? Hi! 
All right, okay, man. so dark blue wristbands, number 1 to 20. You'll be the first 20 people in the UK to get your PlayStation 4. Now, while we're waiting for that, I'd like to invite number one. Numero uno. Up onto stage. Where is the lovely Blaine? Blaine Smith. You've been summoned, sir. Come on up. Dark blue. Where is our man? Now, for everybody, obviously, joining us kind of all around the world, this has been something that so many of us have... It's, it's been happening for so long. It's, and it's finally here. Well, you've been experiencing it, because, I mean, you're on PlayStation Access. You've been yes. privy to the ridiculous level of build-up to this launch. So. Yeah, we have. Uh, the community has been a most... <laughs> it's been a most amazing feeling in the PlayStation community. The, the community has been together. They've been so fantastic, so supportive, and just... So excited, and it's that excitement. That excitement is what makes it all so special. I'd say, and these guys are testament to that. The build up here, that's palpable. Listen to so it. much going on. This is it. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to say the free drinks played their part as well, but it's mainly PS4. It's mainly PS4. This is what all the hard work from the PlayStation staff, the PlayStation community, and just gamers all over the world brings. There's nothing else quite like this. Being here this evening and sharing nah, it with you lot. This is amazing. This is what it's I mean, all for. There's nothing like being here on day one. It's been seven years since the last PlayStation console. All right, guys, I do believe this is it. We're heading we on there. We're going to go meet Blaine number one. Go Good number luck getting your PlayStation, guys. Here we are. Hello. It's very exciting. Right, Blaine, uh, I do believe. Blaine is, is just waiting in the wings. Right, Blaine, you're going to go and you're going to get your PlayStation 4 and you are going to be number one. Here you are. Come he's not on only in. number one, but he's also getting the PlayStation 4 presented to him by Tiny Temper. And? And Andrew Harris, group CEO, the big cheese, numero uno of, of Sony Worldwide. And there's and no one else. Now, it's not, it's not just the lovely Blaine. No, it's not just Blaine. We're going to call Imran as well, who'll also be joining us. So, Imran. Now, Imran is like known to the hardcore queuing community. Come on. You can come join me on my side. Imran, you're <laughs> going to join me. So, how are you feeling? Uh, pretty tired, but pumped. Woo! Exactly. <laughs> Amazing. That's commitment. That is commitment. commitment. We're waiting for the countdown. We're waiting for we the OK. So the people behind now. the scenes giving us the, the signal that we're ready to go. Everyone's getting into place. And we, we hope that so many of you who'll be getting your PlayStations, be it tonight, be it tomorrow, be it soon, that you'll be experiencing that same excitement that everybody here has when you open up your PlayStation 4 for the first time and you take it out of its wrapping, you plug it in and you experience next-gen gaming at it's, its finest. It's actually an awesome experience straight from the box. I've, I mean, I have, I've done it. It's awesome. Okay, we are now just one minute. <laughs> one minute. One minute from launch. But no, honestly, I, I, I had mine the other day. I got it out of the box. And straight from the boot up, it just feels it new, next gen, slick, awesome. Right, well, I think, Imran, you need to tell us what are you most looking forward to about PlayStation 4? Um, the social aspect, as, aspect of the, um, the games, the fact that I can um, play with my friends and um, see what they're doing at any time and join in and give them advice. It's just great. I just love the, the fact that I can join in with all my friends and be connected all the time. You think you're going to enjoy, uh, you know, when you're, you're playing your multiplayer and you have an amazing KO with one of your friends, you're going to make sure you're going to be uh, taking that moment, uploading it for the world to see? Yeah, everyone always talks about it, that fabulous goal that they scored on their friend or that fabulous knockout they got on them that they would go screaming around and woo! <laughs> and now we can finally show it to the world in one press of a button, which is great. So now you can show off. Right, we are taking these guys down to the front, I believe, to get you ready. Absolutely. I'm waiting for people to tell me. It's so exciting. There's so much going on. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yay! Happy PlayStation 4. This is it. PlayStation 4 is finally here. And here we go. Here's our man, Blaine Smith. Take it down the front.
is it going to get his console presented to him by Tiny Temper and Group CEO of Sony Worldwide, Andrew House. So in a controlled manner, the shop is now open for PlayStation. Ladies and oh no, is my is my mic on? Show me. Hello. Everyone's going to be Irish. Why are you as long as I'm with Dan? <laughs>
I'm coming to you, Paul. Mike two. Hi, Mike. Yours to double blue. I've always had this one. What number is that? Four, green. Everyone got Have numbers here at Access. Seven, for example. But the sheer brain roasting volume of digits stuffed down PS4's impressive tech trousers has taken our figure lust to wondrous new places. If you're finding yourself befuddled by all the techno chatter, however, we've put together a friendly guide that spells out PS4's objective awesomeness in terms that will ensure you'll never lose another playground dispute ever again. PS4 CPU is an 8-core 8664 AMD Jaguar processor. Or a blah, 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 as Dave likes to call it. Don't be like him. Tell your friends that AMD processor means developers can now fine-tune their PS4 games with minimum fuss, seeing as how it's a far more friendly component than PS3's cell processor. Those eight cores also mean PS4 will be able to multitask like a champion, downloading patches and game updates in the background while you're happily mowing down Hellgast in a gleaming ultra-pretty futurescape. PS4 has a 1.84 teraflop AMD Radeon Next Generation graphics core. Yeah, teraflops. Despite sounding like the terrified flailing of a stranded kipper, a teraflop is actually a unit of computing speed equal to one million million floating point operations per second. In English, that means PS4 can make a trillion decisions in the time it takes Rob to draw Spider-Man really quickly. Decisions like, this bullet is going in your face, I'm going to make these cars shinier than polished logic, and mosh, mosh, mosh with the PS move. PS4 has 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM. First off, 8 gigabytes is a lot. PS3 has 512 megabytes, meaning PS4 has nearly 16 times the memory of its predecessor. This is awesome because it means developers can make bigger, prettier, more complex worlds and create enemies with more fiendish AI than ever before. And the GDDR5 bit? Let's just say it's way better than silly old DDR3, mainly because Five is bigger than three. And also G, which means graphics. Look at them, all the graphics. PS4 has a six-speed CAV Blu-ray drive. That's three times faster than PS3's Blu-ray drive, as illustrated in this educational video, where PS3 is represented by Nathan and PS4 by this cheater. Essentially, this means super speedy loading times, reducing the time it takes you to go from this I want to play Killzone Shadowfall now. To this. Go on then, confound your mates with your newfound knowledge of PS4's sizzling innards. 
It'll be like having the biggest, hardest conquer in the history of ever. For more access videos, check out the links on screen right now. And don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. <laughs> so that's it, guys. The PlayStation 4 has finally launched. Guys, how what was it? That way? How was it inside? It seemed like a lot of excitement. It was, it was chaos, but kind of a beautiful chaos. Good. And for you, Holly, how was it? As, as a community manager here at PlayStation, this was everything as a gamer I ever thought it would be, and I'm so excited that PlayStation 4 is there, and that the fans and the community can finally play it and enjoy it. I wish I'd said that. <laughs> that was very eloquent, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you very much, Lucy, and everyone here. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Woo!